Somehow, six years later, six years later or so, 2012, Alex Karshevsky, Ilya Suskover, and Jeff Hinton discovered CUDA, used it to process AlexNet, and the rest of it is history. AI has been advancing at an incredible pace since. Started with perception AI. We now can understand images and words and sounds. To generative AI, we can generate images and text and sounds. And now, agentic AI. AIs that can perceive, reason, plan, and act. And then the next phase, some of which we'll talk about tonight, physical AI. We used GeForce to enable artificial intelligence, and now artificial intelligence is revolutionizing GeForce. Everyone, today we're announcing our next generation, the RTX Blackwell family. Here it is. Our brand new GeForce RTX 50 series Blackwell architecture. The GPU is just a beast. And now for $1,599, $1599, you get to upgrade that and turbocharge the living daylights out of it. Well, now with the Blackwell family RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. Impossible without artificial intelligence. Impossible without the four tops, four terops of AI tensor cores. Impossible without the G7 memories. Okay, so 5070, 4090 performance, $549, and here's the whole family. Starting from 5070 all the way up to 5090. 5090, twice the performance of a 4090. Starting of course, we're producing a very large scale availability starting January. Well, it is incredible, but we managed to put these in, in gigantic performance GPUs into a laptop. This is a 5070 laptop. For $1299, this 5070 laptop has a 4090 performance. And so the 5090, the 5090, will fit into a laptop, a thin laptop. That last laptop was 14.9 14, 14 millimeters. You got a 5080, 5070 Ti, and 5070. So we need an enormous amount of computation because we want to train larger and larger models. And these inferences, these inferences used to be one inference, but in the future, the AI is going to be talking to itself. It's going to be thinking. It's going to be internally reflecting, processing. So today, when the tokens are being generated at you, so long as it's coming out at 20 or 30 tokens per second, it's basically as fast as anybody can read. However, in the future, and right now with uh, GPT-01, you know, with, with the new the pre, uh, uh, Gemini Pro and, and the new GP, the, the 01, 03 models, they're talking to themselves, re reflecting, they're thinking. And so, as you can imagine, the rate at which the tokens could be ingested is incredibly high. And so we need the token rates, the token generation rates, to go way up. And we also have to drive the cost way down simultaneously so that the, co the quality of service can be extraordinary, the cost to customers can continue to be low, and uh, AI will continue to scale. And so that's the fundamental purpose, the reason why we created MBLink. Well, one of the most important things that's happening in the world of enterprise is agentic AI. Agentic AI, basically, is a perfect example of test time scaling. It's a, AI is a system of models. Some of it is understanding, interacting with the customer, interacting with the user. Some of it is maybe retrieving information, retrieving information from storage, a semantic AI system like a RAG. Uh, maybe it's going on to, to the internet. Uh, maybe it's uh, studying a PDF file. And so it might be using tools. It might be using a calculator. And it might be using a generative AI to uh, generate uh, charts and such. And it's, it's, it's taking the, the problem you gave it, breaking it down step by step, and it's iterating through all these different models. Well, in order to respond to a customer in the future, in order for AI to respond, it used to be ask a question, answer starts spewing out. In the future, you ask a question, a whole bunch of models are going to be working in the background. And so test time scaling, the amount of computation used for 
inferencing is going to go through the roof. It's going to go through the roof because we want better and better answers. We're announcing a whole family of models that are based off of LAMA, the NVIDIA LAMA Nemotron language foundation models. LAMA 3.1 is a complete phenomenon. The download of LAMA 3.1 from Meta, 650,000 times, something like that, it has been derived and turned into other models, uh, about 60,000 other different models. It, it is singularly the reason why just about every single enterprise and every single industry has been activated to start working on AI. Well, the thing that we did was we realized that the LAMA models really could be better fine-tuned for enterprise use. And so we fine-tune them using our expertise and our capabilities, and we turn them into the Llama Nemotron suite of open models. There are small ones that interact in uh, very, very fast response time, extremely small. Uh, they're uh, super, what we call super Llama Nemotron supers. They're basically your mainstream versions of your models. Or your ultra model, the ultra model could be used uh, to be a teacher model for a whole bunch of other models. It could be a reward model, evaluator, uh, a judge for other models to create answers and decide whether it's a good answer or not, give, basically give feedback to other models. It could be distilled in a lot of different ways. Basically, a teacher model, a knowledge distillation uh, uh, model. Very large, very capable. And so all of this is now available online. Today, we're announcing a very big thing. We're announcing NVIDIA Cosmos, a world foundation model that is designed, that was created to understand the physical world. <laughs> NVIDIA Cosmos, the world's first world foundation model. It is trained on 20 million hours of video. The 20 million hours of video focuses on physical dynamic things, so na na dynamic nature, nature themes, themes uh, humans uh, walking, uh, hands moving, uh, manipulating things, uh, you know, things that are uh, fast camera movements. It's really about teaching the AI, not about generating creative content, but teaching the AI to understand the physical world. And from this, with this physical AI, there are many downstream things that we could uh, do as a result. We could do synthetic data generation to train uh, models. We could distill it and turn it into effectively the seed, the beginnings of a robotics model. You could have it generate multiple physically based, physically plausible uh, scenarios of the future, basically do a Doctor Strange. Um, you could, uh, because, because this model understands the physical world, of course, you saw a whole bunch of images generated, this model understanding the physical world, it also uh, could do, of course, captioning. And so it could take videos, caption it incredibly well, and that captioning and the video could be used to train large language models, multi-modality large language models. And uh, so you could use this technology to uh, use this foundation model to train robotics, robots as well as large language models. And so this is the NVIDIA Cosmos. The platform has an autoregressive model for real-time applications, as diffusion model for a very high-quality image generation. It's incredible tokenizer, basically learning the vocabulary of uh, real world, and a data pipeline so that if you would like to take all of this and then train it on your own data, this data pipeline, because there's so much data involved, we've accelerated everything end-to-end -end for you. And so this is the world's first data processing pipeline that's CUDA accelerated as well as AI accelerated. All of this is part of the Cosmos platform. And today we're announcing that Cosmos is open licensed. It's open available on GitHub. A hundred million cars built each year, a, a billion cars, vehicles on the road all over the world, a trillion miles that are driven around the world each year. That's all going to be either highly autonomous or you know, fully autonomous coming up. And so this is gonna be a very, lar very large industry. I predict that this will likely be the first multi-trillion dollar robotics industry. This, indus this business for us, um, notice in just, just a few uh, of these cars that are starting to ramp into the world, uh, our business is already $4 billion, and this year probably on a run rate of about $5 billion. So really significant business already. This is going to be very large. Well, today we're announcing 
that our next generation processor for the car, our next generation computer for the car is called Thor. I have one right here. Hang on a second. Okay, this is Thor. This is Thor. This is, this is a robotics computer. This is a robotics computer. It takes sensors and just a madness amount of sensor information. Process it, you know, umpteen cameras, high resolution, radars, LIDARs, they're all coming into this chip. And this chip has to process all that sensor, turn them into tokens, put them into a transformer, and predict the next path. And this AV computer is now in full production. Thor is 20 times the processing capability of our last generation Orin, which is really the standard of autonomous vehicles today. And so this is just really quite, quite incredible. Thor is in full production. This robotics processor, by the way, also goes into a full robot. And so it could be an AMR, it could be a, a, a human or robot, uh, it could be the brain, it could be the uh, manipulator. Uh, this, ro this processor basically is a universal robotics computer. The chat GPT moment for general robotics is just around the corner. And in fact, all of the enabling technologies that I've been talking about is going to make it possible for us in the next several years to see very rapid breakthroughs, surprising breakthroughs in, in general robotics. Now, the reason why general robotics is so important is whereas robots with tracks and wheels require special environments to accommodate them, there are three robots, three robots in the world that we can make that require no green fields. Brown field adaptation is perfect. If we, if we could possibly build these amazing robots, we could deploy them in exactly the world that we've built for ourselves. These three robots are, one, agentic robots, and agentic AI, because you know, they're information workers, so long as they could accommodate uh, the computers that we have in our offices, it's gonna be great. Number two, self-driving cars, and the reason for that is we spent 100 plus years building roads and cities. And then number three, human or robots. If we have the technology to solve these three, this will be the largest technology industry the world's ever seen. And so we think that the robotics era is just around the corner. DGX1 revolutionized artificial intelligence. The reason why we built it was because we wanted to uh, make it possible for researchers and startups to have an out-of-the-box AI supercomputer. Imagine the way supercomputers were built in the past. You really have to uh, build your own facility and you have to go build your own infrastructure and really engineer it into existence. And so we created a supercomputer for AI, for AI development for researchers and, and startups that comes literally one out of the box. I just wish, I just wish that DGX1 was smaller. And, um, you know, so, so um, you know, imagine Ladies and gentlemen, our... this is NVIDIA's latest AI supercomputer. And, and it's fondly called Project Digits right now. And if you have a good name for it, uh, reach out to us. Um, uh, it, this, here's the amazing thing. This is an AI supercomputer. It runs the entire NVIDIA AI stack. All of NVIDIA software runs on this. DGX Cloud runs on this. This sits, well, somewhere, and it's wireless or, you know, connected to your computer. It's even a workstation if you like it to be. And you could access it. You could, you could reach it like a, like a cloud supercomputer. And NVIDIA's AI works on it. And um, it's based on a, a super secret chip that we've been working on called GB110, the smallest Grace Blackwell that we make. And I have, well, you know what? Let's show, let's show everybody inside.
Isn't this just, isn't just, it's just so cute. And this is the chip that's inside. It is in, it is in production. This top secret chip uh, we did in collaboration, the CPU, the gray CPU, was a, uh, is built for NVIDIA in collaboration with MediaTek. Uh, they're the world's leading SOC company, and they worked with us to build this CPU, this CPU SOC, and connect it with chip-to-chip -chip NVLink to the Blackwell GPU. And uh, this, little, this little thing here is in full production. Uh, we're expecting this computer to uh, be available uh, around May timeframe. And so it's coming at you.